Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name. We thank you because you have brought us together for such a good thing at such a good time. We are praying, O oh Lord, your hand will work mightily in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray it will be a beginning of great things in every life. Good things in every life. Every good thing we missed in the past, we're going to recover from this moment in Jesus' name. Turn every life around and help us, Lord, that this year will be a year of joy, a year of happiness, a year of victory, a year of dominion. Every one of us will reign over every problem of the past in Jesus' name. Do a creative work once again in every life. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you once again. I welcome you to this revival session. And this is the first session we're having in the new year. And it's an indication that something new will happen in your life. I have seen already that God is a God of creation. Why don't you come back to that? Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. And see God, what he created. And see the qualification. After he examined everything, he looked at everything and see his verdict. And see his conclusion. I'm reading from Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. I'm sure you understand what it says in the beginning. What an appropriate thing to do for us at the beginning of the year. That we go back to the beginning of the work of the Lord. That in the beginning God manifested his power. He manifested his love. He did a creation. And what can we say about that creation? Look at verse 4. And God saw the light that it was good. As he began the creation, he was examining it step after step and day after day, event after event. I was told in verse 4, and God saw the light that it was good. Look at verse 10. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he the seas. And God saw that it was good. Whatever God does is always good. And in your life this year, the Lord is going to work marvelously. You are going to find out everything he does in your life this year will be good in Jesus' name. But then come to chapter 3 now. In chapter 3, something happened. We're told from chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, and God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now the family was complete. The man and the woman, the husband and the wife, Adam and Eve. And then Satan came in the form of a serpent and said, I want to ask you a question. You see, the Lord has done something good in the life of Adam and Eve. And in your life, this year, starting from today, God is going to do excellently wonderful good things in your life in Jesus' name. But beware, beware of this enemy of goodness that will come into your life. This enemy of goodness that will try to turn everything upside down. And we'll begin with a little question. A little suggestion, a little drawing you out of where you ought to be. As God said, you shouldn't eat out of everything the Lord has made in the garden. And Eve answered, no, we can eat everything except just one. He says, you must not eat this, neither must you touch it. Let's see that. And the serpent said unto the woman, 
he shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, not knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up the, of the fruit of thereof, and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. This is what we call temptation. This is what we call yielding to temptation. As long as we are walking with the Lord, as long as we are with the Lord, all the good things he has created in our lives, everything will go on becoming better and best in Jesus' name. But the devil, not wanting us to enjoy that good thing of the Lord, it might come in with a temptation, an enticement to do evil, an enticement to go the wrong direction. But every time the devil comes to trouble you, or to tempt you, or to lead you in another direction, you will say no. I said you will say no. Whoever it is, the devil is using. In this case, he used a serpent. My use a friend, my use a neighbor, my use a relative, whoever the devil is using, every time the devil says we go against the word of the Lord, our answer will be no. In the case of Eve, she ate of that fruit that the Lord had said, Thou shalt not eat, and gave to her husband, and she ate, and they were told, and the eyes of them both were opened. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed thick leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves in the, from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 which is how God solved the problem, how God gave us a redeemer, how God gave us a reversal of what the devil, what the serpent had done. We're looking at Genesis chapter 3 now, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. He's talking to Satan now. I'll put enmity between you, Satan, the serpent, and the woman. Between thy seed, the seed of Satan, and her seed, the seed of the woman, it shall bruise thy head. It's Jesus Christ, by his redemptive, atoning work on the cross of Calvary, will destroy, will crush the head of the devil, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That is, Christ will be crucified. It was at this time that the Lord God himself made or revealed the plan of redemption so that we'll be saved, we'll be redeemed, we'll be delivered out of the hands of the enemy. And we're going to concentrate on this verse 15 now. Look at that again. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. I want to talk to you on the eternal defeat of the ancient adversary. The eternal defeat of the ancient adversary. This ancient adversary tonight will be defeated in your life in Jesus' name. And all the activities and works of the devil, everything will be destroyed out of your life in Jesus' name. The eternal defeat of the ancient adversary. Three points. Number one, the crucifixion and dominion of the Savior. The crucifixion and the dominion of the Savior. Point number two, the crushing and the defeat of Satan. The crushing and the defeat of Satan. Point number three, the conversion and the deliverance of all the seed. The conversion and the deliverance of all the seed. Point number one. What's point number one? I said what's point number one? 
the crucifixion and the dominion of the Savior. Come back again to this, Genesis chapter 3, and have an understanding of this, and see the work of Christ that he did for you and for me and for us, for all humanity, on the cross of Calvary. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. The woman, that's the mother of all living. That's referring to Eve. And it's telling us that was the mother of all the living and all the living. There should not be any association between the serpent and humanity. The devil and humanity. He wants us to hate Satan. He wants us to have enmity against Satan and against the works of darkness, against occultism, against every work of Satan, against every suggestion of Satan. He doesn't want us befriending Satan. He doesn't want any of us coming into covenant with Satan. He doesn't want any of us coming into alignment or a league or an agreement with Satan in any form, in any way. That means if you are in occultism, you are in league with Satan. You are in friendship with Satan. You are in love with Satan. You are a relative of Satan. That's why Paul told that man, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of righteousness. He wants you to break every link with occultism. Every link with any occultic practice. I'll put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. That is the seed of Satan. The children of Satan, all those who practice magic, all those who practice sorcery, all those who practice all those evil things, he wants us to separate totally from them. And if you have the seed of Abraham, of the seed of David, of the seed of Christ, if you're a real child of God, there is a cleavage, there is a separation, total separation between you and them. If you're still with them, that means this enmity between thy seed and her seed has not taken place in your life. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise a steel. That's referring to the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me first of all show you that Jesus is the seed of the woman, not the seed of man, but the seed of the woman. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7, we're reading from verse 14. It says, Therefore the Lord God himself will show you, will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Not a woman, not a married woman. A virgin shall conceive all by herself with the conception of the Holy Ghost. And bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. You see that? That when Christ will be born, he'll be born by a virgin. And then you'll call his name Emmanuel because he is God that is God with us. It is this Jesus Christ that was sent to bruise the head of the devil. It was this Jesus Christ that was sent to die for us on the cross of Calvary so that the effect of what happened in Genesis chapter 3, the sin that came in, the sickness that came in, the, the, the death that came in, the suffering that came in, all those works of the devil, by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, everything will be eradicated out of your life. Look at Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. This is what the seed of the woman went through. This is what the seed of the, the, seed of the woman, Jesus Christ, the son of the virgin, this is what he bore for you. This is what he bore for me. Isaiah chapter 53, I'm reading from verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. When Adam and Eve sinned, that's why the, wound, the, the bruised sin of Christ, that's how it came in. The crucifixion of Jesus Christ, that's why it became necessary. Because of your sin, because of your listening to the serpent, 
because of your yielding to Satan the devil. That's how Jesus Christ had to die. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Look at verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's what happened when Christ was crucified. It was because of your iniquity, my iniquity, our iniquity together. And not because of that crucifixion. He bore our punishment. He bore our sorrow. He bore our suffering. He bore our shame. And the iniquity of us all. You are included. The iniquity of us all, everyone is included. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, He'll take all your iniquity, all your sin, all your degradation, all your disgraceful habit. He'll take everything away from you. He'll lay it on Christ, and Christ will carry it away. Because the Lord has laid on Him the iniquity of us all. Look at verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise Him. You remember that word bruise from Genesis chapter 3? He'll bruise his heel. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. It was because of the sin we have committed. The, the sin of Adam and Eve. And the sin of the descendants of Adam and Eve. That's why Jesus died. And it's because of your sin. That's what sent Jesus to the cross of Calvary. And the moment you say, yes, I recognize that. It was my sin that crucified him. It was my sin that nailed him to the cross. It was my sin that made him to suffer. At that moment, all your own sin, condemnation, guilt, everything will be taken away. It says, he makes his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his son. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied, and by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. He shall bear their iniquities. That means he'll carry, he'll take away all their iniquities. Come to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 12. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Neither is there salvation in any other. There's no salvation in religion. Neither is there salvation in any other. There's no salvation in any human being. There's no salvation in any founder of any religion, any founder of any church. But there's no salvation in any other. But for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's no other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. And we need to be saved. Our sins need to be forgiven. We need to come right with God. We need to reconcile with God. We need to have the righteousness of God. We need to escape the judgment that is coming because of our yielding to the serpent and yielding to Satan and yielding to sin. And there's no other way that can be done. It's only through the name of Jesus, the seed of the woman that has come to bear all our iniquity. We're coming to point number two now. The crushing and the defeat of Satan. The crushing and the defeat of Satan. Genesis chapter 3, and I'm coming to verse 15. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. God is saying, I am the one that will put enmity between thee and the woman. If you belong to God, he puts a separation between you and Satan. If you belong to God truly, then he puts a, a, a severance, a separation, a demarcation, a thick wall, impenetrable wall between you and every dark power, between you and every dark spirit, between you and everything the devil does. But if you're still in league with Satan and God has not put that enmity between you and Satan, between you and occultism, 
between you and um, secret society, between you and traditional religion, between you and idol worship, between you and, you know, the God of the river, the God of the stone, and the God of the wood, and the God of the iron, and the God of this, and the God of that. If that enmity is not there, that you don't hate idolatry with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, that you don't run away from every sin of idolatry and satanic. It means you are not a child of God yet. If you are really a child of God, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. You will not be a member of any gang if you are a child of God. You will not be, you'll not go into occultism if you're a real child of God. You'll not go into any kind of uh, traditional religion, idolatrous religion, uh, whatever it is. If you're a real child of God, you will hate it from the depth of your heart. And it will, even an appearance of it, of Satan worship, will never come near you. It says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head. It shall bruise thy head. This is what Jesus does. He gave Satan a crushing blow, a deadly blow. He defeated him completely. And when you come to the Lord, all the works of the devil, they're defeated in your life in Jesus' name. As you look at this, Genesis chapter 3, you will see that Satan is shown in the picture of a serpent. The serpent came to Eve. The serpent said, and then Eve replied, and the serpent said again, Why are we saying that that serpent was Satan? Look at Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and he bound him a thousand years. You see here, that serpent is called Satan and is called the devil. Now, what did Jesus do? We're told in John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Thank God Satan is defeated. Thank God Satan is crushed. And because of what Jesus did already, that's what Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 says, that he, Christ, will bruise, will crush, will destroy, will give a deadly blow to the head of Satan. He will not trouble you anymore. Because his power is destroyed and crushed out of your life in Jesus' name. But remember, remember, you must maintain the enmity between you and the serpent. The enmity between you and the works of darkness. The enmity between you and every form of occultism. If you maintain that, then what Christ has done in crushing the head of the devil, that will be efficacious in your life in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. Now when you realize this, knowledge is light. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is freedom. Knowledge is deliverance. You see, the people that are looking for deliverance here, they're looking for whatever it is here, is because of the lack of knowledge. And it is not good that we don't have knowledge. Christ has done the work now. The head of Satan is completely crushed. And it says in Romans chapter 16 verse 20, And the God of peace shall... Shall... Bruce Satan under your feet shortly. Thank God it is done. I said thank God it is done. That is the result of Calvary. That Satan is bruised already. His head is crushed already. His head is scattered already. And is defeated already. And is under your feet. He will be under your feet. Forever under your feet. Totally under your feet. Completely under your feet. 
will not rise up again to torment your life in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 2 verse 13. Colossians chapter 2 verse 13. And you, being dead in your sins and your circumcision of your flesh, as he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, that could only be possible because he went to the cross and bore your sin. He carried your grief. He carried the chastisement of your transgression. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and was contrary to us. And he took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Look at verse 15 now. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Triumphing over them on the cross. That means then he has spoiled principalities and powers. All those powers of darkness, they are crushed already. I said they are crushed already. And they will not torment your life once you realize that Christ did that for you. He was crucified for you so that Satan can be totally, his words can be totally destroyed. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. Thank God I am free. I said thank God I am free. You are free in Jesus name. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, that's the death on the cross of Calvary, that through death, that's the death of Jesus Christ, that through death is crucifixion, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that he is the devil. That's what took place on the cross. And that is the answer to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. That Jesus was bruised in the heel. He was crucified. As a result of that, he has destroyed the power of death. That he is the devil. Look at verse 15. And delivered them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage. The reason why some people have surrendered themselves to the bondage of occultism, the bondage of secret society, they are afraid to die. They are afraid of what that powers can do unto them. That's what Jesus came to deliver us from. Fear of death, fear of devil, fear of um, all those uh, evil powers. They are gone now in Jesus' name. Point number three, the conversion and the deliverance of all the seed. Of all the seed. Do you know that we are now referred to as the seed? Now we are the seed of Abraham. We are the seed of the Lord himself. Look at Galatians chapter 3 verse 29. Galatians chapter 3 verse 29. So we can claim this. We can have this. We can receive this. Galatians chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 29. It says, And if ye be Christ's, if ye be born again, if ye be converted, if you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have identified with the crucifixion of Christ, if you have identified with Christ on the cross, crucified with him, and you have died with him, and you are buried with him, and you have risen with him. If we be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Then we inherit all the promises of God that he made on the basis of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. If you belong to Christ, identified with Christ, you believe that Christ died for you. And all the goodness of the atonement of Christ on the cross of Calvary has now become yours. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That means then the promises of God coming from Calvary will be yours in Jesus' name. Salvation will be yours. 
Sanctification will be yours. Holiness will be yours. Purity of heart will be yours. And it's not just purity during the program, purity all the whole week, purity the whole month, and purity the whole year, and purity for the rest of your life because of what Christ has done on the cross of Calvary. Look at chapter 5, verse 24. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. You belong to Christ because you take part in that crucifixion. You identify with the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, all the works of the flesh, they are crucified to. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the laws. Look at chapter 6 and verse 14. Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. But Christ, but Christ forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me. You see, because of the fulfillment of that Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. The world is crucified unto you. All the worldliness, all the carnality, all their passivities, all their drinking, all their smoking, all their adultery, all their fornication, all their voodoo, all their traditional things, everything totally crucified. They will not have any effect on your life anymore in Jesus' name. And I am crucified unto the world. The world crucified unto me and I unto the world. What's the result of that now? Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Are you free tonight? I said, are you free tonight? Identified with Christ, we're free. Identified with Christ, there's enmity between us and the serpent. Enmity between us and Satan. Enmity between us and the seed of the serpent. And all the activities and the works of the serpent. There is a very thick wall between us and him. Between us and them. And their effect will never have any power over us anymore forever in Jesus' name. The Luke chapter 10 verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy. This year, the life will be a life of joy. You realize what Calvary means. You realize what Christ has done. Joy, joy, all over your life in Jesus' name. Joy of salvation. Joy of righteous living. The joy of victory over sin. The joy of victory over sickness. And the joy of victory over Satan. That joy, total joy, complete joy, revelation joy will be in your life in Jesus' name. And the 70 return with joy. All the 70, not 60 out of 70, not 67 out of 70, all the 70 return with joy. Our children will have joy. Our youths will have joy. Our women will have joy. Our men will have joy. The whole church will have the joy of victory in Jesus' name. Saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Because of Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, I've seen him. He's falling already. It will fall away from your life. It'll fall away from your family. In verse 19, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Visit Calvary, visit Calvary and see what has happened that Jesus Christ has crushed the head of the devil and see what has happened that the crucifixion of Christ has taken place because of that there's conversion for you because of that there's deliverance for you and because of that Satan will be under your feet the serpents will be under your feet the scorpions will be under your feet all the power of the enemy will be under your feet. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. You will not die prematurely. Then it says in verse 20, Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not, because the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. This is for the people who have tasted Calvary. 
This is for the people who have known the result of the redemption of Christ on Calvary for us. And it is very simple. The moment you come to Christ and say, Lord, I thank you. I know you went to the cross. I know you died for me. I know that that crucifixion was for me. That death was for me. That resurrection was for me. It was for me you, you crushed the head of the devil. It was for me you defeated Satan. And because you did it for me, I'm going to live in the enjoyment of it. Thank you, Lord, I believe. Then at that moment, your name is written in the book of life. And for the rest of your life, the victory of Calvary will be yours in Jesus' name. Why don't you rise up and say, Lord, I believe that. Lord, I believe that. Lord, I believe that. That is for me. You died for me. You died for me. You died for me on the cross. And because of that death, I overcome sin. I overcome sickness. I overcome Satan. I overcome all evil powers. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Knowledge brings power. Knowledge brings light. Knowledge brings victory. Knowledge makes us more than conquerors. Now you see what Christ did on the cross of Calvary. And that was for you. Open your mouth and pray. Tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I'll put enmity between you and the woman, between Satan and the woman. If you're a child of God, you'll not have any relationship with Satan. You'll hate occultism with deep hatred, practical hatred. You'll hate idolatry. You hate every walk of Satan. You hate sin with real deep practical hatred. If you're a real child of God, tell God, give me hatred for sin, hatred for adultery, hatred for fornication, hatred, hatred for cultism, hatred for Satan worship. Hatred for every form of defilement. Hatred. Anything engineered by Satan, God will give you hatred for them. Hatred for false doctrine. Hatred for every idolatrous practice. Hatred for all their festivals. I'll put enmity, hatred, between you, serpent, and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. Tell the Lord, you want to maintain that permanent hatred, perfect hatred, perpetual hatred for the works of the devil. Then you'll be able to say, the prince of this world comes and has nothing in me, has nothing with me. And the work of Christ on Calvary, the crushing of the head of the devil, will be efficacious for you, will avail for you. He that committed sin is of the devil. We are going secretly. Sneaking away from the house to go and sin, you make yourself of the devil. Sneaking away from the church to go and sin, hiding from the believers to go and sin. You make yourself of the devil. The devil can recognize that you belong to him. He'll be tormenting you. But when you say there's hatred between me and that serpent, hatred between me and that Satan, hatred between me and that devil, you become free. 
what Christ did for you on the cross of Calvary sets you free. And remember now that you have given your life to Christ, Satan must be under your feet. Evil spirit under your feet. That powers under your feet. All those infirmities under your feet. Insanity under your feet. Incurable disease under your feet. In Jesus' name we pray. And the victorious people said that enmity between uh, the children of God and Satan, is that enmity there in your heart? I said that enmity between children of God, that enmity between us and Satan, do you have hatred for, de for the devil? Do you have hatred for evil power? Do you have hatred for occultism? Do you have hatred for secret sin? Uh -huh. Then victory has come in your life. I said victory has come into your life. From this hour, sickness under your feet. Evil spirits under your feet. Satan under your feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Calvary. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for what you have done and for our atonement and redemption. Oh Lord, we accept your death for every one of us in Jesus' name. We turn away from every form of sin and we turn unto you. And we're asking, oh Lord, you give us deep hatred for sin and deep hatred for every evil sin in Jesus' name. Now we know the victory of the cross is our victory. The victory of Christ when he died for us is our victory. We claim that victory now. We accept that victory now. We receive that victory now. Give every one of us the victory in Jesus' name. I pray that every sickness will now come under your feet. Tuberculosis under your feet. Cancer under your feet. Incurable disease under your feet. Brain problem under your feet. Be healed in Jesus' name. Barrenness under your feet. Barrenness under your feet. And I pray that you receive your miracle children right now in Jesus' name. All the works of the devil. All the works of the devil. All the works of the devil be totally destroyed out of your life right now in Jesus' name. Lord, set your people free. Set your people free. Set your people free. He said, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We have known the truth, we are free. We have known the truth, we are victorious. We have known the truth, we are saved. We have known the truth and we're healed. We have known the truth and we're delivered. I pray that authority and dominion will come to everyone's life, even from this knowledge now, in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. And the courageous, conquerors, victorious, successful people of God said, Amen. Yeah.